Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. This is 4F Beauty. You are most welcome. And my eye is streaming already. Fantastic. Right, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it, the description. This is a first impression review and tutorial with the Disney Cinderella Revolution collab. I have got the palette, which includes blushes and highlights. I've got the standalone highlight and I have got the lip gloss. I did not bother with the lashes because I don't wear lashes often enough to warrant spending out on getting more lashes when I have plenty here. So, if you want to find out exactly what I think of these, how well they do or don't perform and most importantly what this looks like in glorious technicolor then my friend you have the best seat in the house as I've said uh, for some considerable time now oft here echoed elsewhere in less imaginative channel but I'm backed by Sammy the Sloth Straw. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, I am back from the intro. Uh, I would have shown you some of these items in the intro, one of which I appear to have lost already, which is just fabulous. Um, but I'll show you these two, and I'm sure I'll find the other one imminently. Where the hell has that lip gloss gone? Oh, anyway, these are the important bits. Uh, this is the Cinderella Just Before Midnight highlighter, which opens like a book. Very, very thick packaging, so you're really going to need to be um, a fan of Disney to, to like these because it's. They're going to be buggers to store, let's just put it that way. Um, and then this is the. Cinderella Just Before Midnight palette which as you can see has got blushes and highlighters this side and then colours this side uh, I did swatch these um, to say I wasn't overly impressed with the swatches um, I'll put them up on the screen here I'm not taking it out of here yet no 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 I've definitely taken it out of here where the hell did that just show my no it didn't good where the hell is that gone do you know what this is really frustrating because I literally just had the lip gloss right here and now it has completely disappeared and I genuinely don't know where to for it has gone how strange Anyway, it's only a clear lip gloss with some uh, glittery bits in, but these swatches 
Um, I've had I Heart Revolution highlights before. I've got the one of the heart ones, uh, one of the baked ones that they did. Uh, Goddess of Love or Goddess of Faith, one or two. And that's stunning, beautifully reflective. So I was kind of expecting these to be the same quality. Which is why, even though this had blushes and highlights in it, I still bought this one. Just found the lip gloss. Um, It's more like a finishing powder than a highlight. And sadly, so are these. Now, the blushes on swatch seemed nice. The highlights, well, they're just not basically that they're not what I would class as a highlight so no matter how much I like this palette I know for sure next declutter this is going because I've got all of those shades in blushes anyway the highlights are next to useless and I've pretty much got all these shades in other palettes anyway but I love Cinderella I was really intrigued by the, th the thought of this could become an all-in-one where we can travel again I thought brilliant there's enough colors in here there's blush there's highlights I could chuck this in I'd only have to include a bronzer and I'm um, you know face is done So, I will do an eye look with it, I will show you what the blushes are like, I will show you what the highlights are like, but I think you can probably tell what my reaction is going to be from this point. This is still a teaching channel however. So, partly because of my chronic pain, partly because I want people to be able to keep up with me, regardless of their skill level, I go at a slower speed, I don't cut any of the blending out, and only if I'm doing a cut crease do I speed up any of the blending. I also zoom in really tightly just to my eyes so that you can see what's going on regardless of how good your eyesight is and how small the phone screen is that you're watching me on. This does mean when I'm looking down to change brushes, clean brushes, add more pigment to a brush, you are probably going to see my lovely Widow's Peak hairline, but that's the kind of trade-off, unfortunately, for you to be able to see what's going on. It also means you don't get to see me wince with pain all the time, which it happens quite regularly, very regularly, often, yes. Um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a second or two 
where I talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. The way that eyeshadow wears on them through the day is very similar, but the application method to get the best look possible and the longest wear time possible for both eye types is very different. And I see so many people, including really big beauty gurus, say, I've got deep set eyes, and I'm looking at them thinking, No, my love. No, but they say I've got hooded eyes, and I look and go, No, my love, you've got deep set eyes. The pain is, the fibro fog is very real today. So, I'm going to insert that clip. It is going to be very up close and personal, i.e. adjust my eyes. And please don't jump and scream and drop your phone. Once the clip's finished, I'll see you at the other end to uh, play with some of these pigments. Now, um... My eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over mm -hmm with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow. 
instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with this Real Techniques fluffy brush. Um, obviously there's a lot of blues in this, so clearly I'm going to go for blues. Um, there are a couple of pinks, there's some teals, there's some browns. You can get neutral looks from this if you want, but obviously I'm going to go for the blues because Cinder's ballroom gown was blue. That's what most people think of. So I'm going to start off now. The ones that are textured are mattes. The ones that are that don't have this sort of ripply texture on are either satin or shimmers. So I'm going to start off in Fairy Godmother. Not too much kick up in the pan, a reasonable amount, but that's okay because I just tap back off into the pan and then pick up the kick up next time round. Now, we're going to start by doing the Viennese Waltz blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turn to come back again. The reason we do this is because I'm 46, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing these little circular movements and holding the brush right at the end, you put as little pressure on as possible, but you are blending and gently moving the lid. So you're less likely to get those telltale tiger stripe marks where your eye has folded over on itself and left you with what looks like a barcode. So I'm just going to put this across the bulk of my static lid. This is actually blending on really nicely. true to the colour in the pan. And it's one of the ones where you have the option of applying it more sheer or a couple of coats building it up to the level that I've got here. Not a massive amount of fallout, if any. That's good to see. Blues are not easy shades to create. Blues, greens, purples. Um, it's another reason why if there's a blue in a palette, I will normally go for it. Because they can be very patchy. But this appears to be blending without any problem at all, which is actually quite nice to see. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, well I hope tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, having your morning cuppa and a bit of brekkie and just slowly easing yourself into your day, I hope your day is as fabulous as you are, darling. I always sit back and check 
both eyes because obviously they're not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and Photoshop them. I'm just going to use a clean washcloth to clean this brush off. I don't like using colour switches, they're too harsh on the bristles, especially natural brushes. I mean this is synthetic obviously, but... Um, yeah, it's always best to sit back and check because I know with my Fibro I can get random swelling of my eyelids or I can get random dry patches. Um, and it can be really frustrating because I have to do a slightly different shape to make them look the same when your eyes are relaxed. Let me just zoom you out just a fraction. That's better. You can see all of the eye now. Right, I'm going to go into a Daydream, which is quite a bright blue. The, uh, the brightest matte in the palette anyway. I'm just going to this and I'm going to run this just a little bit further down the eye. If you've moved your crease this is the point that you should be following the new line that you've made. So I'm just going to use this. Normally I, I put a darker colour through the crease. Today I'm going for a brighter one. Because I kind of... I kind of want a, a brighter fairy tale-esque look rather than go for my more dramatic you know deep smoky through the crease look and I'm just blending this into that first shade they're actually blending really nicely together which is good to see Doesn't seem to be any skipping or patching or anything. Right, I'm just going to dip just the tip of the bristles into midnight. Just for the outer corner. Just to give a tiny little bit of depth, but literally just on that outer edge there. I like that. So I finally managed to get hold of a dentist. That gave me the antibiotics for my abscess. I said, right, wait a week to make sure that the abscess doesn't come back. And I'll make an appointment. So I did all this, went back, and she went, mm, yeah. I can see on the x-ray I've taken the abscess is coming back. So we'll give you some more antibiotics. The annoying thing is, I, re I was under the impression that because this was done under the emergency triage thing, that it would be at NHS prices, but got charged private prices. So I've emailed NHS England to ask them whether this is right or not, because there's a hell of a difference between the cost of NHS dental treatment and private dental treatment. There's a little bit more fallout from those deeper shades. That's not an issue because I always do my base afterwards anyway.
Right. This is a Brushworks HD brush. This is one that I got out of my uh, rocker box. One of the rocker boxes. And once I've applied the pigment to the brush, I'll be wetting it with this. Obviously, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you'll kill it. Um, you can use any spray. You don't have to use a fixing spray. You can use a priming spray, a setting spray, a fixing spray. You can use. Uh, you can even just use clean tap water. As long as you change it every day, because you don't want to use stagnant water on your eyes. So I'm just swatching some of the shimmers here to see which one I want to use. Because like I said, I want quite a light look today. So normally I'd go for one of the darker ones, but I'm actually going to go for something a little bit lighter. I'm going to go into Gus because he was my favourite of the mice. Gus Gus! He was the chunky mouse. Okay, and these instantly get hard pan on them. Great. Let's hope it's the kind of hard pan that you can still actually pull, pull a pigment up from. Right, so I've sprayed it, but this ferrule is now moist, so tuck it into your knuckles and spin, because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the glue that holds the bristles. Right, so I'm just going to apply this onto my mobile lid, where I am yet to apply any pigment. It's quite a thick, um, quite a dense satin or shimmer because it's completely covering, you know, I've not needed to cut my crease at all and you can see that's completely covering, it is slightly chunky I'm just going to use the edge of the bristles there just to blend it into that outer corner. Dry the brush, go back in again for the other eye. Now with my other eye, because I have that super deep creasing, I do have to deal with it a little bit differently. I have to do the one thing that I'm always telling you not to do, which is stretch your eyelid out. Because otherwise what happens is the pigment builds up loosely in the crease and then as it dries through the day ends up getting in my eye and down my face and it's really painful. You can see I've got a super deep creasing here. But literally all I do is straighten the lid out enough to straighten those creases. I don't put it out to my ear. And as soon as I've blended the pigment over that area and then gently put the lid back and then just finish doing the rest of the lid like I did the other eye. Do not stretch your lids out like that unless you already have that issue that I do with the super deep creasing. Um, that's from when I was five years old, back in the 70s, having my eyes pulled around at the ophthalmic. So that shows you 40 odd years ago, and I'm seeing the damage now. Okay. Right, I'm going to pause you, my lovelies, while I go and pop some base products on, and I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait a little while until I can speak to you again, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. And so I'll see you after this. 
wibbly wobbly bubbly bit wibbly bubbly boo and all that oh a little bit of the bubbly alrighty I am back I did my soap brow thingy with my usual pink honey oh I can never bloody remember the name of this honey glow strawberry sherbet uh, texture hold Basically, it's soap in a pot with a hole for your spoolie. And then I used Midnight to colour them in with. Right, going in with this flat topped brush. Uh, I think I will go into. Do I want to chuck some pink in? No, I look like I've got a pink eye. I'm going to go into Drizella, which is a teal satin. I'm just going to run that along my lower lash line. And then this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it. Flat topped but chunky. Great for getting up under your lashes and buffing out. But any dense buffing brush or smudging brush will do. And I'm going to go into Fairy Godmother. Which is obviously the first shade that I use. The very, very pale periwinkle. And I'm going to use that. Just very gently buff the lower lash line out and just soften it. I have managed now to find a few pencils that will actually work in my waterline, but my eyes are particularly sensitive today, so I'm not going to risk it. But by buffing out the lower lash line like this it does at least give some interest right this is a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay looks ago and I'm going to go into one of these highlighters and I'm going to go into Bibbidi and pop that under the tail of my brow And then in a corner, bring it round and just blend it in to the start of the shade underneath the eye. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you one last time uh, while I pop some mascara on. I'll probably uh, spritz my face with my Gerard setting spray, my Slay All Day, and then apply the highlight over the top just to see if that gives it any kind of glow whatsoever and I'll use quite a tapered um, brush to do that with. I'll also pop some of that gloss on my lips, do something with the hair and I'll be back with my finished thoughts on the palette so far. Again, for you, instant. I am back. My eyes are watering. I'm hoping to get through this without looking like Alice Cooper from the School's Out era. Right. Um, 
Mascara is the L'Oreal Very Different Unlimited Mascara Waterproof. Not as waterproof as it claims until it very much dries down. Obviously Lippy is the Cinderella Gloss. So, what do I think? Blushes, nice enough, the blushes. Eyeshadows, the ones that I tried. Yep, that's blended nicely. Shimmers, a bit chunky, but you can still get um, pigment up off of them. Highlight, when applied over wet skin. More highlighted than I was expecting, so I'm pleased about that. Not quite highlighted enough for me, but better than I thought on swatches. Which is why all swatches really do is tell you what the colour's going to look like on your skin tone. Um, so far, am I glad I bought it? Kinda. Uh, is it likely to last through a declutter? Probably not. I've got these colours in better formulas elsewhere. Um, but I get the feeling my goddaughters would love to get their hands on this. So that's most likely the direction in which it will go. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> I haven't tried this one on my face yet, but it's the same formula as these, so... Uh, I will use these off-screen. Try a few more uh, of the eyeshadows. The other two blushes, you know, maybe try this big standalone highlight and see what I think. But uh, if you've not got those particular colours and you're a Disney nut, you're probably going to love this palette. Um, if you're like me, where you've got a crap ton of palettes but still end up buying more. Depends how mad you are about Disney. I mean, if I had shelves up and was displaying makeup pieces, I'd probably stick it up there. But would I reach for it to use it? Probably not. You know, if I want to use blues, I'm going to reach for Certify Affinity 2 or um, Ace Beauty Oceanic or. Colourpop Blue Moon. Um, this or my Norvina pressed pigment palette, the big square blue one. You know, there's it's nice, but personally, I would wait for a sale. See what comes up over. You know, Black Friday if it happens, or Christmas and New Year sales, and maybe wait until then to pick it up. Right. Um, the one thing I probably will keep hold of, actually, is the lip gloss. Because it's not that sort of sticky, gummy, you get the stringy bits lip gloss. It's actually very moisturising. Nice, very nice indeed. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check, you are still subscribed. YouTube are still deleting you, but they are leaving my films in your recommended list. So it's not obvious that you have been culled. How nice of them. Um, it's also worth double checking uh, your notification status because all of mine got pushed back to personalised from all, which means you don't get anything at all. Not that they're actually sending emails at the moment anyway, uh, but hopefully they'll change their mind about that the same way they changed their mind and didn't tell us they were stopping. In which case, you're going to want notifications at all in order to get notified when a film goes up. Failing that, um, if I'm doing two films a week, it's usually Tuesday, Saturday. If I'm doing three films a week, it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So just, you know, pop on every so often and make sure you've not missed anything. 
uh, a, a like would be nice, thank you, a thumbs up. Uh, what do you think? Are you more or less likely to buy this palette having seen how it performs? One thing I will say I'm pleased with is that they did two pale princesses. They did Cinderella who is the colour scheme for that is obviously aimed at people like myself, uncooked chicken. Uh, then you had Belle, which is aimed more at your medium skin tones. Then they had Tiana from Princess and the Frog, where you actually have deeper skin tones. And that is one thing that I really, really do respect Revolution for. They absolutely include deeper skin tones. They're one of the few drugstore brands that have bronzers deep enough for my deepest black friends to be able to use on their skin tone. Uh, so I am pleased about that. What do you think? Have you been tempted by any of them? Uh, if you are of the deeper melanin, do you like the look of the Tiana one? Do you think the colours are going to work on you? Um, obviously I... Uh, I can only ask my friends whether it goes ashy on them. So, have you bought it? Are they ashy? Do they work? Um, I'd be interested to know and I'm sure it'd be helpful for other people that are reading through the comments as well. If you're new here and you've tripped over me somehow, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it here with my random waffling about nothing and everything all at once. Uh, it'd be lovely if you too would like to join the 4F family, it's super easy. You hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope YouTube will tell you when I upload. Don't hold your breath though. Uh, in the meantime, I've got an awful lot of films. Uh, in the backlog that you can watch. I've got tutorials, makeup reviews, um, collabs, challenges, tags, I even reading my favourite poem in one of them. So basically, as I've said for some considerable time, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy, and indulge. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.